Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you yet another painting tutorial. Um, I've had a lot of comments on my first two Black Templars videos wondering if the, uh, the way that I painted them is transferable to vehicles. So with that, I've done this video. So I have done the uh, Redemptor Dreadnought from the new Black Templars Army Box with contrast, dry brushing, and all the same techniques that I use on the infantry. And I really hope you guys like the, uh, the results of what I've done. I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. And um, stick around to the end of the video, learn all the tips and tricks on how to do it. And um, yeah, enjoy the video. So like the uh, other two Black Templars videos I did, we started by spraying the miniature all black and then spraying it with lead belcher um, over the top of that. The other two videos, we just did a zenithal. Here we wanted a little bit of a more solid coat because the, um, the exoskeleton or underskeleton of the Dreadnought is going to remain silver. So you're going to want to have a pure coat on that for layering stuff. So all those gears and stuff under his leg and under the armor and stuff needs to be silver. So make sure you get a good solid coat on that. And with that, we are going to move on to Black Templar's Contrast, just like the infantry miniature. The only main difference between um, what I've found painting uh, infantry and vehicles is you want to pick a panel at a time and you want to load up your brush very heavily. You want to give the contrast uh, basically the amount of liquid it needs to do its thing. So as you can see, I'm basically blobbing it on, which I know is, uh, goes against everything um, a painter is taught to do, brush control, thin coats, all of that. But you basically want to give it a, a pooling coat and then give it its own time to basically settle down, stop all the brush strokes forming, all those kind of bits and pieces. See the way it's like that? It will give a solid black coat if you just give it its time. Like I said, make sure you complete an entire panel um, before any part of it has dried. You want it all to blend together quite nicely. You don't want a dried section of contrast going onto a wet section of contrast. They don't blend together after that. You're just going to leave a horrible line between the two. So that is that first panel, which is one of the largest panels on the miniature all contrasted up. So we're going to go around the entire miniature and do every panel that we need to with the same color and we're using the same technique. And here we have all the panels that we needed to black out blacked out. As you can see we've gotten a pretty smooth coat over the entire thing with some of the later layers um, and some of the weathering later on it will cover up anything that you're not happy with so far. So jumping over to corn red and this is for all of the uh, the little gun details, the casings on weapons, um, including the big plasma cannon there. Um, basically to tie the miniature back in with the infantry. All of the uh, chain sword casings and bulk gun casings on the infantry are painted this way. So for uniformity, uh, they will also be painted this way on the Dreadnought. And here you can say all the different parts that I decided to do red. I obviously did half of that knee pad in red as well, um, as it's one of the army schemes. It's on the box, so I copied that and brought it across. Next, we're going to move on to all of those bone parts. Um, so this will be all of the purity seal tassels. In case you had noticed, I glued 17 additional purity seals um, to this miniature. Um, a bunch of ones left over from the Black Templars infantry box and the ones you actually get with the Redemptor Dreadnought just to make it feel a little bit more Black Templary. Um, if I had have gotten my hands on that plastic upgrade kit, I'm sure there was a few bits I would have uh, stuck on, but I haven't gotten my hands on that just yet. So maybe the next one. So like I was saying, all the tassels, the other half of that knee pad is also done in cream or bone for, for my particular scheme. And then also the big flat panels on his shoulders are also done in this scheme. So you don't want chalky, streaky results. So you want to take your time and do two thin coats on this. Even that might be if you uh, might show a little bit of the black through, but that's okay. We're going to be layering it up later on. So don't be worrying too much. So this is where we're at with the first color of Zandri just done. It shows where the color is going to go in the rest of the miniature. Next, the base coat of Retributor Armor Gold. And that's going to be for the Aquila on his chest. And the uh, Crook's Terminalis symbol. Also want to do the trim, like the uh, the framing around the sarcophagus lid and stuff like that. As you can see, I made a mistake here. I accidentally hit a little bit of gold. So I've just quickly washed off my brush, loaded the brush down with water, and then I'm quickly scraping across, removing that gold and fixing the mistake. 
and with the mistake fixed and all the other parts uh, blacked out from this point of view we have all of the base coats I feel on the miniature so it's time to go for a wash so for this one we've gone for Nolan oil so I know previously in other schemes I've done a driver's of silver to catch the edges of the black um, on the infantry models and I will be doing things like that but unfortunately with this particular scheme the transfers have to be applied first and then the weathering has to happen on top of those otherwise they, they just won't blend to the miniature correctly the uh the transfers want to get bashed and chipped just as much as the paint does so you have to be a little bit patient work a little bit backwards here so an all over coat of known oil uh, being careful not to have it pool anywhere you don't want it to pool and that's just from brush control and being vigilant paying attention to the panels you've already painted and mopping up any blobs of wash that have dried there with your brush Like I said, this is an all over coat, so every single part of it will get this black and then we'll build those colors back up later on. Okay, now this is what the miniature looks like when the shade has dried. Still looking a little rough and ready. I promise you by the end of it, you will be uh, pleased with the result. So the first one is you shop the bone. This is probably one of the longest stages. You're going to be building back up those cream um, or bone uh, colors on the miniature. And you're trying to get a pretty consistent, pretty smooth coat. This will take two to three thin coats of paint. Obviously on an infantry model, it doesn't matter that much. The, the human eye won't notice small streaks. But on these huge panels on the side, on the shoulders of Dreadnought, you will notice it. So even when I thought I was done, I, the camera had stopped rolling, I'd finished, I'd picked it up to put on transfers and I stopped and I said, you know what, I'm going to give it one more coat just to really get rid of any streaking and get it done. So as you can see how see-through that is, but give it the time and give it the coats and you're left with this. Beautiful, pure bone shoulder panels. Time for a bit of a fist on red. This is going to be used to just pull up the red colors on the miniature, give that a bit of layering, knee pad, gun casings, and the like. We're also going to go around and layer up any of the wax purity seals. I was going to do them the traditional um, Screamer pink color that I was used to, but the, the red accent across the color, I thought it was a pretty good idea to just keep with that tone. Another color added in. Okay, now for a fun step on the miniature. This beautiful transfer sheet came in the Black Templar's army box and I am now going to use it. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how to do it in this video. I will leave a link right here now, uh, pop up on the screen, which will link you to my transfers video, which shows you how I apply transfers to get them applied like this. Smoothly, no transition lines. They are stuck on. You can't see any of the lines around the transfers. Make sure you go and check that video to learn how to do that. Now it's time for that dry brush, the one that I told you earlier. Like I said, I would have liked to have done this before, but needs must. So now we need to be a little bit careful. We're going to add scratches and chips to the paint job. So anywhere where there's an edge, we're going to catch with the lead belcher. Gun casings, the entire front armor panel. The way I look at things like dreadnoughts and vehicles is on campaign, when they're you know fighting in wars, they are going to be the biggest target on the battlefield. Them stomping forward, surrounded by infantry. People are going to be basically terrified and targeting this thing. Even with weapons they know can't hurt it. Psychologically, they're going to want to just shoot at it. So it's going to be scratched and dinged and bashed. Um, and I quite like the look of that. So we're going to follow along and basically weather the crap out of this model. It also helps with quite dull colors, things like all black color schemes. If you have that pristine black look, it just for me anyway, it just looks a little too clean. Um, not enough excitement on the miniature for me, so adding a bit of weathering really helps. As you can see, the model is really starting to come together. Now it's time for one of my favorite techniques, um, one I don't need use uh, nearly enough, but it's a lot of fun, and that's sponge work. So I've got a bit of old case foam I've torn out of something. 
And just like dry brushing, you basically load up the sponge and then remove the majority of the paint until as you're pressing it, it's only leaving behind a little bit of the brown paint. And then from there, you're gonna sponge on ball damage. So like the silver dry brushing, you're gonna go for a little bit of paneling, a little bit of edges, anywhere where you think it's going to get uh, scratched and bashed up. As you can see, most of the presses I'm doing here aren't leaving behind a lot of paint. That's almost deliberate. Um, it's the kind of thing where I'd rather, you know, sponge on paint 10, 15 times until I get the right amount, then sponge on one big blob wrong at the start and not be able to take it off smoothly. So take your time with this. Just keep applying it until you're happy with the amount of damage that is being done to the miniature. Start to see the scratches and damage left in the uh, bone color. And now we're going to follow through um, by doing that exact process again, a little bit lighter, but once again with the lead belcher. We're going to add a little bit more chipping over the brown chips we've already done. Love to do a, a, like a collage of videos of my clean hands at the start of a video and the state of them at the end. I think it'll be quite funny to see. Now just pressing on the silver. As you can see it catching those corners. This is my opinion is how you weather the kind of flat panels on things. I say a dry brushing isn't going to catch those areas. It's really starting to look like a, mach a machine of war now. Also the, uh, the basing scheme that I've chosen for this army is the, uh, the kind of Martian scheme, that really bright, vibrant red. And that really helps to frame um, these dark paint schemes. It really makes the miniature pop. Really helps out with the aesthetic. You'll get to see that at the end. Last thing we're going to do is throw a layer of Tesseract Glow over the plasma coils. Nice hefty coat. One pass. Just give me that green energy. Nothing too fancy. Should look something like this. And here we have a contrasted and dry brushed up Redemptor Dreadnought for the Black Templars army. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a few bits and pieces about using contrast with larger flat panels. And um, if you did enjoy what you saw, think about supporting me and supporting the channel. Subscribe below. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a comment. I will do my very best to get back to each and every one of you. And don't forget to drop a like on the video. Here's a little extra picture of the two brothers fighting side by side. Thanks again for watching, guys. And remember, the plan is simple. We paint them all.